there's been a spate of rather intriguing thefts about town recently. Robberies in London are hardly supernatural events. They look like common robberies at first, but these perpetrators have all claimed to have been under the influence of some supernatural power. I'm not so foolish as to forget that criminals will spend many hours. I'm trying to keep out of trouble. Next day behind us, man. It's lucky I'm trying to keep out of trouble. Next day behind us. <laughs> What's that man done? <laughs> Rob the pawnbrokers down the road. A demon made me do it. I can't remember much. That's what's so queer. I've never stolen anything in my life before. Let's pretend that I believe you. Tell me who made you do it. All I can recall is a silver watch. Swinging in mid-air, it was held by someone or something. A dark presence whispering. I could only see its eyes. A demon. I'll need to verify this with the shopkeeper. What can you tell me about the robbery? There's not much to say. Most of the items did come from the same seller, Enzio Capelli, Sorcerer Supreme, a famous showman from Italy. Several weeks ago, he was forced to pawn his family heirlooms, debts. I have the address of the last person who redeemed something of his, a lovely pearl necklace. That helpful? Not again! Stop her! Stop! Somebody stop that thief! Where am I? What's happening? What's all the rocket? Ah! Ah! What on earth is going on over there? You took something from a pawn shop. Looks like trouble. It's all very hazy, but I remember something silver flashing in front of my eyes. Then I heard a sort of bell. Next thing I know, I'm here with you. My only lead is this mysterious buyer. That might lead me to the demon.
want to give you the necklace now. All together! Mr. Antio Capelli, I presume? So you're responsible for the theft of your own jewels? You are very much mistaken. Aren't you, my child? Yes, I'm very much mistaken. Hold on. You are very much mistaken. And now you are so very, very tired. Aren't you? Yes, I'm very, very tired. Now, you're going to do a little job of work for me, aren't you? <laughs> My goodness, what foul behavior. What's going on? Where am I? You've been arrested for theft. How very intriguing. I can't remember a jot of it. <laughs> Let's get you out of here. I've pulled a few strings and they won't prosecute on account of your losing your mind. Be free, little chicken. Single bus for you criminals. Oh, you'll do as we say, Bailey. Or we're gonna have to pay you and your family a visit. You leave them be. Hey! I'm after him! Blighters after you. The city's been turned upside down since Attaway Transport and the Milder Company went belly up. With no one to fill their shoes, the gangs made their move. Well done, Jacob. And as is Bailey, the only omnibus builder in the city, they are demanding that I work for them. I know good men who want to form a united transport company. What is it they say in America? 
for the people, by the people. That is our intention for the London General Omnibus Company. But those thugs got hold of the deed to Attaway Transport. We need it to begin our company. Well then. Atta go. He's gone. I can live with that. I sent Ross's men a message. You and your family are safe. Oh, you are bloody brilliant. The founding members of the London General Omnibus Company. Good, moral men. All of them. We'll have buses rolling before you know it. Thank you, Miss Fry. My pleasure.
If only I knew which shipment it was, then I could trace the weapons to their owner. Capital idea, Freddy. Here we are, the shipping docks. Now, where are the cock and crates intended for Mr. Plutus? Crates to be retrieved. Don't want them tea leaves turned to dust, do we? Protect these crates. Any mistake will cost you dearly. Keep your knickers on. We hear you. Good, because I ain't repeating myself. It's a shame I can't stop in for a pint.
dear sister thinks I'm destroying things. I'll show her how I settle accounts. with Cockham Merchants. Oi! Where's our money? Delivery will be... It better be. Templars. Meet Mr. Peters. Weapons are here. Same routine as before. The twopenny opens a vault, we robs it and leaves the money in his storehouse. Look sharp, the boys are waiting. To the Bank of England. Yeah. Plutus is twopenny. Say you. You're not gonna like it. Now, see here. I am graced with the Abilene family's robust constitution. Two pennies rob in the Bank of England. <coughs> the governor of the bank. I think I might need to sit down. There's no time for that. Bastard's probably deep in the vault by now. However you get in, I don't want to know. Of course. But do you know how I can get in? The bank is designed to protect England's gold reserves. A fortress, guarded under lock and key. There is the bank manager, Mr. Osborne. Only he is allowed free access to the vault. You can spot him near the entrance. And, oh yes, one man 
keeps a close watch on the vault door. He watches it like a hawk. If he sees you, he's sure to seal it. The guard captain, Gus Howard, knows Tupini well. He is in on this, I'm certain. Mr. Fry, please use discretion. The only way to implicate Tupini is to catch him in the act. Do not jeopardize him. No big displays. This is the Bank of England. If you encounter any trouble, I'll be in the atrium. In disguise. Tupini won't be leaving that vault. Where is Tupini? Please! I have a family. He's in the vault ogling his priceless paintings. Fancy. Fitting for two pins, too. assist you what would you have me do I rather fancy a private tour of the vault right this way sir the records are stored in here
You've got the rest of your life to count it, as long as you live. We should be nearly finished by now. You've stolen your last shilling from the people of London. Those animals squander their savings. We are the experts in investment. Nothing would be built or improved. Nothing would rise above the muck without our hand guiding. No creating the future. They benefit as much as their work. It is their city, not yours. Without our investments, there would be no city. For the path of the dead. them all for robbing the people of England. The Bank of England is closed until further notice.
The currency, a laughing stock. Inflation out of control, Tupany brutally murdered. And yet Parliament does nothing. The bill will be defeated, sir. That buffooned Israeli shall be taken care of. It has been arranged, upon my honor. Your honor carries little weight. How dare you, sir! The poor people of this city have suffered enough. Today I granted a significant rise to my staff in order to counter inflation. What? I would supply all of London if I could. Meanwhile, you sit in your club and wax poetic with promises your honor cannot pay. Your family's fortune, however. I wonder what they would offer to keep your record out of the newspapers. About the same as Disraeli would offer for your balls, I'd wager. But let's be generous. Why limit ourselves to one or the other? And we can have it all. What say you, sir? <laughs> Shall I come collect? No more dallying. The halls of Parliament must be free to govern. Again! Understood? You may see yourself out. A letter for me? Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. May the father, etc., etc., be. So Starrick's got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. A letter. For me? 